Test one, one, two, one, two, one, two. Test one, two, three, four, five. Test one, two, one, one. That's All right, good luck, guys. One. Thanks, Norb, for everything, man. Yeah. Huge cool. help. Yeah, see you. Huge help. See you tomorrow. I can hear your mic, but no music. Exactly. Yeah, the music is off. So both mics, you should be hearing. This is mic one. Mic one. Test one. This is mic.
Challenge to our interest and our value. And it's a time to test our wisdom and our skill.
Okay. Are we ready to rock, Mike? Okay. Welcome to the 2017 Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. I am Dave Okert. I go by Doc. This is my partner in crime, David Shoemaker. And well, David, we just make sure that we don't call him late for dinner. It's all good. Our, uh, our first talk that we're going to have today is, is on NVRAM. And uh, what we have behind us, uh, this was uh, loaned to us by uh, Rob Anthony of Lockwin Lit. And uh, he does quite a bit of corrosion repair. Uh, what happens when the batteries on your pinball machine go bad, they leak acid onto your boards and tear up your traces. And what I have brought that David has in his hands are several uh, WPC system boards that have had acid leaked onto them and I some of them work some of them don't work I've worked on some of them and I just really don't care they were given to me as examples that I can use and uh, sometimes I put them together as, as training aids and and show people them and it, it doesn't matter whether you own one pinball machine or a hundred pinball machines Who's going to remember to change the batteries every six months? It's not going to happen. Is your smoke alarm going bleep, bleep, bleep? Yeah, your pinball, machine doesn't, your pinball machine doesn't do that. And so um, I can't tell you how many times I see this. And it's newer pinball machines, older pinball machines, um, Bally, old Bally's, new Williams, uh, System 9, System 7, System 6, System 3, all the way through the, through the years. And... Uh, the answer to that is NVRAM. NVRAM comes in many different flavors and replaces your, your CMOS. NVRAM means non-volatile random access memory. And it will replace your CMOS chip. Um, and the reason they come in different flavors is because of the, the different sizes that are required uh, for the different systems. The large board that David is holding up is a Williams System 7 which uses a 5101. That would also be the same thing that's used in a Bally-35 or a uh, the Stern 200 uses two of them. And also, what, uh, Stargate, Defender, Robotron. It's not just pinball. The, um, oh gosh. So that's what that's going to do is that's going to replace your batteries. And all it does is it holds your settings and your high scores. That's all it does. Um, and it doesn't kill your board. Yeah, and it won't kill your board. The 5101 is, is widely used, and it's also... Uh, the 5114 is used in um, Joust, Robotron, Bubbles... Stargate, a lot of the Williams video games. The other thing is the 6116. Uh, 60 the 6116 uh, is in all of your System 11, System 9s. Yeah, that's where it'll go. Mm -hmm. uh, the 6116, we just found out, so it's works wonderful in pole position. This is the chip that's reversed. Six, 6116 works wonderful in pole position. Um, we're finding just about anywhere that there's a CMOS, somebody makes an NVRAM for it. And we have several different, different examples of the, um, all these different flavors of them. There are several different manufacturers of them. Is, is one better than another? Is the $30 NVRAM better than the $10 NVRAM? Not really. They're, they're pretty much the same. Um, you know, it's just this guy wants a couple more bucks for making them, and this guy is good with, I can make them really cheap. The, the chip that's actually the, the actual NVRAM, they don't make. They buy those. They buy them from all the same place. The, the cost is the guy designing the board, the layout, getting them made, doing the assembly. So that's where the cost actually comes in. The, the actual chip, that's all from the factory. 
Now, not, not to be supporting one of our vendors, but Rob Anthony Lockwood Knight is a really great guy. And he has one that runs for about 35 or 40 bucks. It's probably the most expensive NVRAM out there, but it is switch selectable. So if you need it as a 5101, you flip the switches. If you need it as a 6116, you flip the switches. Um, that's good for people who have a tendency to trade their games and want to take their NVRAM with them. So generally when either David or I do an NVRAM, it's staying there forever. Done, you're not getting changed. So we actually, we'll buy uh, 10 or 20 of them at 10, $11 a piece. You know, so we've, we've laid out 100, $120, we have 10 of them, 10 machines get them. I will not repair a board and let it leave my bench with batteries on it. Won't happen. I don't want to see it again. One of, one of the biggest problems that we see with, with WPC boards is that the traces are so small, a lot of times when people remove the battery holders, even to install a remote battery holder, uh, it will damage the traces enough to the, the board will not boot again. And then you start, one of those has my heavy wires, as David called that it. That one. Um, has heavy wires on the back of it. And this one, this is actually, this is actually 30 gauge wire. So it's, it's pretty small wire. It's just it has a, a heavy shield on it because my hands don't work very well. Now, he would use the same wire, except it's got hardly, hardly any insulation on it, and it's, it's really nice and clean and tight and looks like something the factory would do. I don't care what it looks like. I want it to work. <laughs> you know, and his, his hands work. Mine don't. So another thing, when you... When you remove the CMOS, it's rarely ever going to be socketed. So you're going to have to, the best way to do it is to actually cut the chip out, cut the legs on the chip. Wait, wait, one step back. The best way to do it is if you don't have a clue what you're doing is pay one of us. True. Okay. <clears throat> because we will do it, we will do it right, we will warranty the work. If you do it and then we fix it, you're still going to pay. I do, I do have to throw in another plug for Rob Anthony, lock one let. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you have NVRAM and you buy it here at the show, I believe that, I don't want to hold his feet to the fire, but I believe that he will install it for free while he's here. Yeah. If kind you of. do want to tackle it, you need to know which end of the soldering iron to hold. You need to be fine control with clippers. You, you definitely want to cut the chip out, uh, cut the legs, and then individually desolder the legs. Uh, this is an application, and I'm, I'm a tool whore. I love tools. So uh, I, have de I have three different desoldering guns, and each one is cool in its own way. Generally, when I put a desoldering gun on one of these, it'll eat a trace. This is something that I would actually prefer to use desoldering braid um, after I've individually removed the legs. I'm going to heat up and individually remove each leg after I've cut the chip out. We should do a video for that. We should. Yeah. And then you don't end up with spaghetti on the back. Because that spaghetti came from simply just pulling that chip out. That board actually works. <laughs> yes, yes. It well, no. So. <laughs> hey, stuff happens sometimes. So we want to see some of the NVRAMs and cool stuff. Yeah, so just don't crush them in your hand, but there's not going to be a problem. It is very easy <laughs> to tell uh, one of Rob Anthony Lockman Litt's uh, NVRAM. He, he likes to use purple. Uh, and he also, some of his, I think he also goes by NEDMD, I think it is. It's on that little bag over there. I think it's NEDMD. Any pin. Oh, any, any pin. pin. Excuse me. Yeah, any pin, DMD. Yeah. NVRAM. 
Now, if you get into if you get into something like like the was that we have here floating in the background, that uh, that uses a coin cell lithium battery on the computer motherboard, so that doesn't count. Uh, your newer Stearns uh, no longer have batteries in them at all. Um, they actually have NVRAM configured into the system. Are they using an NVRAM? I think they might be right now with the SSD. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the Spike system and the SAMI system. It's incorporated, so it's, yeah, it's no longer an issue. Um, the new Aliens that, uh, that is inside that one is um, going to be a lithium coin cell that uh, is inside their off-the-shelf computer. That's yeah. Kind of, that's kind of all there really <laughs> is to NVRAM. Um, it's not just a pinball thing. Uh, any, all, all the games out there, anything. If you see a battery on a board, just think that it's a little hand grenade and somebody's already pulled the pin. Um, any board, every board. That's, um, it's, that's, very much, that's very much true. Uh, it's, you know, we, we see it a lot in, well, we work on a lot of Williams. Uh, Williams video games, um, with the one exception being Moon Patrol, because it's not really Williams, it's IREM. Uh, but every other Williams game, they come in just, and they look kind of like that first picture there. They look all nice and crusty. And uh, I took in a, a Superman, which is uh, one of the seven deadly Ataris, <laughs> as there are seven deadly sins, so shall there be seven deadly Atari pinball machines that all have white wiring. Um, that one I set in, uh, I took that MPU and I set it in a uh, solution of vinegar for probably about a week. And about three days into it, parts started just falling off the board. Um, there was that much acid corrosion in it. I'm, I'm still not sure if I can salvage it or not. Um, it's got pretty heavy traces. It's a good possibility that between the two of us, we might be able to salvage it. Of course, I don't know if the guy wants to pay us to do that, but um, it is what it is. Does anyone have any questions as, as, for NB RAM or use application, where to get them? Any of those things? That's, okay. that's, that's what we've got in NVRAM. And we're going to take a brief second, move this little sign, and then we'll jam right into scanline generators. We can go early into that, right, Mike? Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. We, we just won't go early into uh, WAS. OK. Yeah. Level of difficulty between doing that versus the remote battery holder. You still have to change <clears> the batteries. You still have to change the batteries. Whoops. Um, but the soldering. Yeah. It, level of difficulty. The if you well on which kind of board? It's it, for either Adams or something else. Okay. That one with the wires so back, that was because that's because that when yeah when they're pulling this it ripped the traces. So. I think Riley Anthony actually has this. Yes, it's a certainly on, on adapter. I have a you pinball magic cap slip the, into here. It has a different there. type. The holder's still here. Battery. It slips in, it's, you know, kind of then runs off to it remote. does. It, it, as if it's like a battery. A yeah, thing, basically. Thing, yeah. Um, so that's not going to solve the solution. CPS two or or a one ground one. Is it a yes? The problem with those is uh, usually big box like this, it's tight. blue if on these, top, black on the bottom. If the batteries have ever gone bad, the, these things have started the to corrode. The, 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 these will, yeah, these will start to corrode, yeah. and, and the, the box you'll get a, a patina of oxidation, and, and it won't solder the, the dam. 
So I, I'm really not currently familiar with that game, but I um, could look up the. But actually, if you've you. seen but that, this kind of stuff isn't. One problem with battery acids for, uh, is that Capcom, right? they're insidious. It depends on which one it is. Um, there are, so you know, some of the Capcom stuff, damage, uh, damage, like the CPS2, you don't neutralize it. is a cartridge-based system, and eating. what they it's did to try and prevent. Uh, corporate espionage was started chain reaction was they, the they put a security bit in there, material. and when the battery um, dies, depending uh, on the basically type of battery, it's considered suicided, it and, may and not it no longer works. An right. And uh, if you're so now they alkaline batteries, it's um, not an acid. I forget who it is, it's dark alkaline. something or People other. Say it's battery acid. Uh, it's over not. in the UK. So if you use uh, Went back you have to neutralize it with your and was opposite. able to break the code. So that's and where so now they can be recoded. Vinegar takes away for alkaline. It's not an issue when the battery um, dies anymore. You just put another battery. Or use baking soda good. for you know, like uh, and I, old. I think that's probably um, the battery you're talking about. It's um, uh, the, it's probably about it's probably about alkaline batteries. The old oh, primary uh, soda. that's the, a time. The, the old batteries. Maybe those you use baking soda. If it's if it's square and it's either yellow or black. So those are the two ways you use. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, from whatever what. If you don't know, and you just take a little screwdriver to your you pry you it can off. do one, got four little tits it. on the bottom of it. Um, people will say, oh, so those, those water. are still available. Oh, you, you can get those. Tap water, anyway. make sure. Uh, Mouser. Now, Mouser's wait, a good place. You don't want to turn it on arrow. again until it's thoroughly uh, dry. Yeah, that's, that's called a time. Your oven has a warm setting. Uh, you find that in, okay. in things it's like usually um, 125 to 150 degrees. Okay. Um, some in of your rack? Capcom. Let it sit for a couple hours. Yeah, I haven't worried as well. You leave the door cracked. It, so it, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the ones the ones that have That'll the dry. timekeeper in them. Yeah. Um, you'll uh, you'll the, get the water. You know, careful, you get water. Those in don't leak. The ships. Okay. Um, if it's what dried you, out, that's it that's going to be another not, lithium battery. Not okay. And uh, all if those you want to go buy water, those don't leak. They do go bad, but when they go bad, what will happen is you lose your settings. And usually in a Capcom, it'll tell you the battery you want. Okay. Um, it'll actually come the, up the right on the screen. Really it'll sure say battery is low. Okay. It'll say CMOS the reason bat. Just
if I've dreamt of this A gentle heart, a sweet caress You are my love and my This magic moment So sacred and beautiful Spring the new life For you and me Two hearts that beat together So here we are, hand in hand, I cherish this moment, I still can't believe that it's true, it's true, yeah, I swear my love will never die, sweet brown eyes will never cry, I give my love to you.
No. You tear it apart, you put the little square thing back in? No. It's just, it's just not worth it. Too much work, huh? For what yeah. you get out of it? It, it is. And the risk of messing it all up? Yeah. All right. And the things are only 200 bucks or whatever anyway, 300 bucks. Right. It's not a big deal. Okay. Just curious. Okay. Once again, welcome to the 2017 Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. I am still Doc, and this is still David. It says so in my underwear. This, uh, this next few minutes... Uh, we're going to cover scanline generators. Scanline generators are specifically for LCD monitors, and uh, what they're what they are for is to generate lines. <laughs> so you look at the hey, wait, my picture's gone. There was a picture in picture here a second ago. All right, so if you can see that screen, <laughs> it's very sharp. It's very crisp. LCDs are like that. The problem is, if you're used to looking at a game monitor, it doesn't look right. It's too smooth. You're used to seeing the dots. Especially Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man, when it's very smooth and blocky looking, it looks stupid. Scanline generator will fix that for you. And scanline generators, they run anywhere from, from 10 to 30 bucks, depending on, once again, who made them. And they all use the exact same parts. It's just, you know, this guy wants that, that, more money that and this guy doesn't. doesn't look right for people that are used to. Now, if you walk in off the street and you haven't seen Miss Pac Man in 20 years, you're like, oh my God, that looks amazing. And you're not going to care. If you're somebody who lives with Pac Man on a regular basis, you're like, I don't look right. Um, and so it, it seems a little strange. You're still looking like that. Those are scan called scan lines. That is a physical manifestation of the, the actual interior of your picture tube. It's an arrangement of small dots in rows. And those are what's getting hit by the gun when it does each scan line putting out the picture. In LCD, you don't see that because of the, the way it's been manufactured. It's a much higher density. Um, this is 1920 by 1080. A game monitors 320 by 200. There's a lot less information there. This can interpolate what they used to have, all those big, big dots, in a lot smaller and it's a much finer result. So higher resolution picture is not always better. Especially when you want to play something that was designed to run on 8-bit. Now, you may not care. 
If this looks fine to you, that you do not need this little adapter. And that is the little adapter. That's all there is to it. And there's a little switch so you can turn it off and on. And like I say, that, that one's a more fancy one. That one's about 30 bucks because it's got a switch on it. But I mean, do you, do you really need a switch for your scanline generator? Not so much. If I'm going to use a scanline generator, I'm throwing that bad boy in there. Boink. I'm not going to turn it off. He's going to care. I'm not. Yeah. There's the difference. Pepsi, Coke. I have taste. Tall, short. Fat, ugly. Wait, I think I got both those. Oh. So that's what we've got on, that's why this one was so short. This, there isn't much to it. It's, that's all it is. It's that simple and, and uh, it's what it's good for. This, these, uh, these also work for if you're installing a, uh, a TV instead of a monitor. Um, which again, well, it's still LCD, right? Yeah, still LCD, LCD. TV. You're not going to buy a tube-based anything any longer. They've stopped making them. So if you have to bring up a game, new, old, whatever, it's going to be running something like this. So that's what we've got on scanline generators. Any questions? Yes, LCDs yeah. into in in okay. replacing for CRTs. Yes. Okay. Well, if you yes, so if you if you have a real Pac-Man game, okay, and your monitor has gone out, and you and can't find a replacement, and you're stuck putting in an LCD because nobody will sell you one. Okay, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a converter board to take the CGA signal out of the game and convert it to a VGA output. That's going to result in a picture that looks like this. Okay, um, That will work fine. If you want to put the lines back in, you also need one of these. Because I haven't seen an inverter or converter board that has this built into it yet. Mm -hmm. um, The problem is, that if you want to make it yourself, it's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars to build, whereas the Chinese guys can do this and that for 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a delay. It, it basically, it's, it's throwing away every other line of data. Yes. Yeah. Sure. You said you had three. Are they all different? Yes, I have. I have three different mm -hmm. ones. I only carry two models with me. Yeah. Uh, the two that I carry with me are both uh, Hako or Heiko. Uh, I have the I have the 808, uh, which is uh, obsolete. Uh, it was replaced by the FR 300. Yeah. Fries. And, uh, if you're if you're <clears> in the area, Fries carries them. I saw them on the shelf yesterday. But I can I would buy them off of Amazon because I can get them cheaper off of Amazon. Uh, yeah. oh. Fries will match yeah. prices, though. Really? Yes, they, they big signs. We match in their prices. You walk in, show them on your smartphone. This is the price. They'll say, "Okay, here's your price," and you walk uh, out right then and there. And the and the other one that uh, the other one that I really like uh, that I have on my bench at the shop is a uh, circuit specialist. Um, the circuit specialist, uh, it's half the cost of the FR three hundred. The, the vacuum is uh, about three times better. Um, the nozzles are, I think they're, if I remember right, they're like five bucks as opposed to 30 bucks. Speaking of nozzles, this is the most important part of a desoldering tool. The right size tip for the right size pin. You don't want to use this to get through this pin. They sell, they sell tips, yes. You have to buy them all. 
You, you buy, you know, you buy tips separately. Little, little of both. Uh, the, the, the two main sizes that you're going to need are going to be uh, one, one point oh millimeter and the one point six millimeter. One point six millimeter does uh, your point one five six headers um, and any large capacitors or bridge rectifiers. Uh, your one point oh millimeter will do all of your smaller transistors, uh, smaller caps, uh, everything else. You look at this board. The tip you would use to desolder this is going to be a considerably larger bore hole. Than and I'll, this. I'll definitely show you that when I when yeah. I show you those those yeah. two desoldering so, guns because the 808 I, I have a uh, 1.6 in and the FR 300 I have a 1.0 in. Um, <clears throat> what you what you're looking for is that your your uh, tip should people be. Wanted, people wanted the should, should features slip over of the, the FR 300. Smoothly. They wanted to be able and have to have a little bit of gap because you need air they wanted flow. They wanted a longer cord. Solder suck. Yeah. Um, um, but you don't want it so vacuum. large that you're uh, missing they wanted, the, uh, the pad, basically. Uh, Whereas the, you know, this uh, one's a much larger pad. Way to um, one thing the is tips. the larger tip is also going to give um, you more heat, which is going to so be good for a, a big They kind of took the 808 and just did a major redesign on it, you know. And, and uh, didn't well, they totally make it better. Yeah. You know, uh, almost doubled the price on that 808. The, the only problem that I found with the, the one from Circuit Specialists is I don't like the vacuum chamber. Uh, the vacuum chamber has a, a large spring in it where the, where the solder collects, and I can't get it back out there. So what I end up doing is I take my, take my weller and stuff it up there, and, and I leak it all over the floor, and then my wife comes and cleans it up later. It's hard to clean. It, it is. You know, whereas uh, in, the, in both the 808 and the FR300, uh, they have a like a metal cross plate in the back of the chamber and it all just gathers up on that cross plate and then you pull the chamber out and worst case scenario is you take the chamber apart and all your solder's out. So it, that part was much easier but when the one from Circuit Specialist at half the cost of the FR300 and twice the suction and you've had to fix the FR300 what, a half a dozen times so far? Oh, I've had to fix the FR300, well, I sent the first one back, uh, right out of the box, and then I have repaired it three times. This is my solder sucker right here. So. <laughs> I heat it, swaps it. <laughs> well, you know, oddly enough, David and I tag team stuff once in a while, and, uh, well, you know, uh, I heat it, and he hits it with a little bulb thing, you know. Yeah, I hate that. Um, it doesn't work that good. <laughs> it can work. The, the trick with any of those suction ones it, that I discovered is I take a pair of snippers and I cut a little V in the end so that I can get it down over the soldering iron without having to do this switch yeah. thing. And then the problem with that is every time you fire that, you're going to bounce a little bit. And that's going to push the tip of the soldering iron into the board. And I just... Um, I, my bench rig, I've got a... Pace industrial system that I got off eBay. You can find those for a couple hundred bucks, but they are they're production units. Um, I have one of the 808s that I carry around for like the show. I don't take my unit from. Somebody like me to change the transistor every once in a while. Yeah. The other thing is is that my pay system it's a it's a wand, and the vacuum is in, on the shelf. So whereas the 808, the, those things, I, I, I feel like I'm using a, a, a soldering gun. Which just, the, there's, a, there's a lot of weight there. It, it's funny. His hands work. Mine don't. I'm kind of broken. So when I try and use the wand thing, it's like, it's like, God, this, this is difficult. You know? But then I get that big gun, and I'm like, oh, no problem. That's, I have to have her help me because I heat up one side of the board, and she pulls it out the other side. That's actually a good way to deal with yeah. it. If I'm pulling... So that's that's exactly what I was talking about. Where we're, we tag team stuff. Yeah. 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 So if I'm going to pull this chip, which it, if, if I was going to do this, the the NV RAM on this, I'm going to cut all the legs off right at the right at the chip itself, which leaves a little hook. I'm going to take some paste flux with and a little paintbrush, and I'm going to run that down it, front and back. Um, take a big blob of solder on my soldering iron, and I'm going to hook the, the, that little bit of hook with the iron, and I'm going to be able to just pop each chip. That's going to leave the board with no pins in it, but there's still solder. Right. 
Okay. Now, if it's like a big ground trace, this I might have to do two-handed. Uh, I'll put this in a vise, basically. Heat one side, suck from the other. Um, but usually what I'm going to do is, and this is where the flux is a big deal. I've globbed the flux on there. You can use all the flux you want. It means that the tip is going to conduct to this really well. Um, flux cracks the oxidation layer on the solder. And the oxidation is the insulator, which is why it's like, why won't this melt? Because it's oxidized. Yeah, and a little bit of flux. Now, I used to buy my flux at Radio Shack. Radio Shack no longer exists. It's a little tub of flux. It's, it's what it is, it's, it's rosin dissolved in petroleum jelly. I found it. They've, Fry's has it. They've got the same tub. Like, Plum. oh, sweet. Now I know where I can get it. Plumbing flux works good, too. And I don't like plumbing flux. You, yes, it's the same stuff, sort of. Um, unless you get the acid core plumbing. You don't do that. That's bad. <clears throat> um, so that's how I'm going to end up doing it. You know, that's how I would pull that. Uh, cut them, lift each pin, and then come in with with the, 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 the heavy flux, go in, suck each of the, 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 the sites. Um, if I'm thinking, if, if it's a board like this where I know it's gonna be a problem, I'm actually gonna run more solder on here first. I'm gonna put new solder on, uh, just a little bit on each pin. And it's gonna give me more thermal mass so that when I hit it with this, this desoldering gun, it's gonna be able to grab more and pull it better. It's very, very similar to the effect of tinning wires. Yeah, I'm basically tinning the board yeah. to be able to get that off because I don't like fixing traces. Right. I'm lazy. I don't want to have to fix something. If it, yeah, <laughs> it's, it still happens. I still swear every time it does. <coughs> and I mock him for his big fat wire. Uh, thank you. That board works, so you know the end result is the important bit. So yeah, give us a couple of minutes. We'll uh, we'll run back to the uh, command center, and we'll, I actually have those, both those uh, guns on my table right now, and I can show them to you. Yeah. So, like I say, just give us a couple seconds. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> okay. So after this, we're doing. Uh, we've got th we three thirty is our next. And that is what. Uh, was. Was? Okay. Mm -hmm. So.
miss his favorite part of the night when the club starts to get real hot. That's when the freaks come out, looking sweaty and faded. And tonight I'm straight looking to get X-rated. Uh oh, I see my homies from the east side. Hit it. They must have got the word that we was rocking some bird. Me and the music by design boys making some noise. Check spot as we coasting about in the drop. Uh. Don't you
David gets back, uh, he had to get a little more water. A little on the parts side.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2017 Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. I am still Doc. This is still David Shoemaker. This afternoon, what we're going to cover today is Wizard of Oz by Jersey Jack Pinball. And we would, we would definitely like to thank the owner of this machine, Daryl Burke, for, for donating his broken machine so that we could try and get it fixed. But in the same instance, we, we would like to uh, acknowledge Jersey Jack Pinball that they provided the parts to try and get this back into working order. And this machine is well out of warranty. So they went above and beyond in trying to support their product. It's good stuff. So with Wizard of Oz, it seems to be that the average pinball technician just doesn't quite get it. And the reason that they don't quite get it is because Wizard of Oz is not a true pinball machine. It's a computer with a pinball display. And once, once the technician can wrap their head around it's a computer with a pinball display, then it all makes sense. And through, through any flaws that are, that are in this machine, it has a manual that is 300 and, what, 15 pages? 11 by 17? This week? It's next week it'll be a couple more pages. Huge. Okay. Several pounds. There is no other machine that I know of other than Hobbit and Dialed In that have the manual in the machine so that you can go through the manual in the machine. Okay, very unique, very good support. But with 315 pages and the average pinball manual is about this big and has an illustrated parts breakdown, that's about it. If you're lucky, you get a scat. Uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Problem is when you're going through that much information, people have a tendency to get lost because it's like reading the Bible. It's like, <sighs> Wow, hmm, Corinthians, oh, um, John, uh, it's long. And, uh, well, but Butch is kind of hiding and, you know, because he knows that his manual is War and Peace. It's, it's a novel. But it, it is a very good novel. It, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And we're going to touch on a lot, of the, a lot of those things. The majority of the problems with, with Wizard of Oz can be broken down into two categories, either a lighting issue or everything else, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I had a couple of other ways I was going to say that, but Jersey, you know, he said. <laughs> so um, one, of the, one of the biggest problems with, the, with lighting issues is they, they stem from the ends of these cables and it, it doesn't matter who makes these cables, they, uh, they don't crimp well and sometimes the wires fall out of them. Matter of fact, I think we've got a couple of short ones and I probably threw them in that box. I didn't see them unless they're, or they might oh, yeah. be. I might have left it inside. Oh. Nope, I didn't. Okay, this is, this is very common that, that these wires will just come right out of the crimp. Pass it around. And the, fir the first mistake made by any repair technician is, well, I don't have a crimper, let me solder into this piece of plastic. And why doesn't it work and why does it burn up the light board? I don't know, you tell me. So what we did, and by we, David and I, he, he, he's guilty in, in this as I am, he provided me with a little bit heavier wire to put in the, into these, uh, are they JST? JST, JSP, yeah. JSH, yeah. whatever, whatever they are. I don't know what they are. <laughs> they're, they're really tiny and uh, very hard to work with. Um, but he, he provided me with uh, some six wire that was a lot heavier. And so we use this uh, heavier wire for testing. And we'll go ahead and pass these around. You'll see the difference. This is probably a, a 26, 28 gauge and this is like a 22 gauge. Doesn't, doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but when you're tugging on these things, trying to make sure that your light boards work, it makes a big difference. So 
So that is the actual raw pins that are going to get crimped onto the stripped wires. The two examples. <clears throat> yes, very small, um, very little, very little wire to crimp. Now, the one of the one of the biggest problems that we see in WAS is that with the lighting issues. Uh, is that the lighting is all tied in series, so it's kind of like a Christmas tree set of Christmas tree lights. If you lose one, sometimes you lose them all. And trying to find that elusive one, um, it's really not that hard once you understand how the troubleshooting procedure is laid out. And if you follow the troubleshooting procedure that was delineated by Butch Peel in the manual, it all works. One of the, the only problem there is you don't always have uh, about a 24 to a 26 inch cable to jumper over what you need to jumper over to see what's going on. Um, so, which is why we learned to make those cables. That's yeah, exactly why I learned to make those cables. With the uh, with the assistance of, of Butch Peel and the factory, uh, David and I are working on a test device that uh, the average end user could probably make for less than 50 bucks. Uh, we're probably talking maybe 20 bucks. That you can actually be able to test and drive your own light driver boards. So you don't have to call the factory and go, I, well, I think it's the Tin Man, when in actually it's the Scarecrow. Uh, you can actually test, you will actually be able to test any individual board running an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. So and connect this to this to be able to test all that. So as a standalone test. This this is done we we have <clears throat> nothing nothing into this other than that this is an that's Arduino? an Arduino. This is an Arduino. What's the green oh. is that the lamp board out of the Yeah, this is the Tin Man. It's Tin Man. Um, this would test the inputs. It so you're isolating this. So you'd be able to verify one board's working, uh, at least all the inputs, and that all the, the various chain. So this, the way these, the way the entire game is, it's, it's one long string. So if this board fails, if one of these relay chips goes bad, you'll get signal up, you'll get, part of the string will work, and then the rest of the board will be dark. Or won't work correctly. So this would let you be able to exercise that and piece by piece. Generally, generally when the, the back end of it goes dark, it takes out everything behind it. Because sometimes the whole board works. Right. Yeah, yeah. So right. then you'd have a, another board, you daisy chain to the two together and be able to test it. That so way. This, this is the whole purpose <clears throat> for making this, this uh, inexpensive device, is so that the end user can better support themselves and it helps at the factory too, because when the factory goes to get you what you need, it's not two attempts, it's not three attempts, it's right the first time. You know, I need this. Oh, here you go. You know, whether it whether it's in warranty, out of warranty, it's a, a one one. It's done. You know, so th that's our goal, and we've already tested it, proved it. Now we're looking to figure out how to package it and make it cheap. We're not looking to sell it. We're gonna we're gonna give this information away. And if you don't know who David and I are, we wrote the uh, monitor flowchart uh, for Watts uh, because there that was out of the 300 and some odd pages. That was the one area that got that got missed. And when you write a novel like War and Peace, sometimes, well, there's a lot of stuff. And sometimes stuff gets missed. Not, not a bad thing. It just, whoops. And so, hey, we got it. We did it. Here it is. When did you do that, David? Pardon? When did you do that? Two years ago? Uh, two years ago. And uh, that, that is available on the Internet Pinball Database under Wizard of Oz. Um, and it's, we did it for free. We did it for, to support the community uh, and help the community get back up and running. And anything that we can do to help the community get back up and running, 
also helps the factory because it takes the burden off of all the calls. And then they can field you know, the real problem calls instead of the dumb calls. So it's, it's, it's a win-win, you know? I mean, I don't work for the factory. I don't get paid by the factory. I have no endorsement of the factory. But I endorse the community, and if I can get a win-win out of both, then everybody's happy. You know, this particular game has sat for three years, um, packaged up, non-working, and uh, like I say, with the with the support he of the factory, he wouldn't take a dollar for it. Just wouldn't do it. Yeah, we mm. yeah we offered him a couple hundred bucks, and he just wouldn't take it. <laughs> uh, it's broken though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he had its sister next to it, and fortunately, he was able to bring its sister up. And you know, we told him, "Hey, if you loan it to us, the factory says they'll give us the parts to fix it for you, so that we can teach everybody else how to fix it." And uh, so again, once again, it was a win-win, and everybody's, "Hey, let's make it happen," you know, and. Uh, uh, we, we especially want to thank uh, Butch and David because um, this was a little more of a basket case than we thought it was, and we got it late Sunday night, uh, and it had to be transported to the show, so we weren't able to triage it prior to the show, and it didn't arrive until late on the last truck Thursday night. So it came in about 8-ish, eight 8-9-ish. Eight, at night, not a lot of time to triage. Fortunately, uh, the uh, they had a pretty good. The factory had a pretty good idea of what was actually wrong with it, and sent us most of what was needed. You know, there were still a couple things that didn't quite get there. But if you don't know, you can't send it. That's kind of how that goes. And uh, so, what this originally had in the lighting was this lower half of the lighting was all white and nothing else. Uh, previous to, to us receiving it and having that, uh, it was on location and all of the lighting was pink, all of it. The only color there was, pink. Didn't matter what you did, it was pink. Uh, and they got it about halfway up and that's where the frustration started coming in. You know, and, and the guy's getting frustrated, and the guys at the factory are getting frustrated with the guy getting frustrated with them, and back and forth, and, you know. This is all about, hey, if we all play good together, <laughs> you've, got, you've got one of the nicest games that was ever made. You know. Gameplay is great. Art's great. A couple too many toys, but, you know, hey, whatever. So, anyway... What do you want to show? Huh? What do you want to show? So, uh, we've talked about the lighting, and uh, what we want to show you is that we have the computer case cover removed. And David, you and, want to? And Butch just cringed. Yeah. Da David, you want to show the? No, no. We we you put it back on. We took it off. What we want to show you is the top of this animal, and on the top of this animal. You know, if you can't read War and Peace, the official WAS manual, your lighting problems are listed right here. Okay? They tell you which uh, cables go from how this daisy chain goes. And it breaks it down for you. One of the nice things about that breaking it down for you is that if you've got the hood up and you can't see the screen, You got that, okay? So there's a little forethought there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, get it right there. Oh, it's getting crazy. It does, but. Yeah, it's gonna keep kicking. Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. All right. There we go. Now we're happy. 
So the thing that we wanted to show you is in, inside, the, inside the computer on the I.O. board. And there are three LEDs on the, uh, on the I.O. board. And if I can get my, my fingers out of the way here. So you have this LED right here that is currently solid lit. That, that basically, if I'm correct, that is the straight up power LED. Is that a correct, Butch? OK, yeah. And then you have this one blinking kind of slow. The other one over here by David's finger blinking really fast. The one that's blinking really fast means that you, you, your USB has enabled for your light driver boards. If it's not blinking at that speed, your USB did not fire up, and your light driver boards aren't going to work. Uh, that could be caused by several different things that we've found so far. Generally, it, it, you know, it could be caused by a bad connection to the motherboard. Uh, some, of the, some of the early WAS had um, USB cables that uh, went to the pinout on the motherboard. And they found that the, the headers kind of, after a while, rocked loose. The, if you have a WAS of that era, the easiest fix is to take a standard USB cable with a micro B on it and plug it into one of the USB ports. This one has had that done. So there are, there are available USB ports in the motherboard in the back to do that. Uh, the other flashing LED that is kind of fast, not as fast, is the actual um, computer running uh, for the, for the oh, I.O. board. The I.O. board computer. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the, the lighting system and the lighting system issues. The other lighting system issue is this particular cable right here. It's kind of hard to see. Next to the, the really fast flashing light, that one you always want to check and make sure if wires come out of that one because that is the very first cable that goes into, I believe it's WAS 29. Six. Excuse me, WAS 6 goes into the very first board. And if it doesn't feed the first board, then you get nothing in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way through the rest. That one at both ends um, has a tendency to, one of the wires comes out. And it's not that hard to fix. You know, you just have to be able to identify it. And that's kind of the case. So if you've, got, if you've got your three LEDs in this state, you're good to go for lighting. OK? And is that what you found when this, when this game had the bottom half was in white, so it wasn't turning the, the different shades of color to white, right? Well, when, it, when the bottom half was in white, we had this state. This state gives us a beginning place. OK, so the I.O. board in this state is, is good. It gives, us, it gives us what we want and what we should have. What we found, or I should say what David and Butch found, because I was busy doing dumb things, uh, was that several of these small interboard cables uh, had wires pulled out of them, and then others well, had like the bad broken boards. Um, they had broken wires wires pulled out of them and or others had issues that we have not diagnosed yet which could be blown fuses. Every one of these light boards has a fuse on it. And so you still got me? No? Uh oh. Oh I'm good. Cable popped out. I lost the cord. Broken wire. Quick soldering iron. I, I, I broke a wire. It happens. See? See what I mean? Wires pop out. It happens. Uh, so they had, uh, they had found several of the, of the short cables, you know, either had a broken wire, a wire had pulled out, um, or we just had some defective boards. And like I say, they, we have not had a chance to diagnose them yet because the, the late hours that, you know, we got into this. And, uh, you know, we're, since we don't get to keep them and play with them and we have to send them back to the factory, we're not going to diagnose them. We're just going to send them back. Um, 
or well, the owner will send it back. Um, if we got to keep them and play with them, then we diagnose them and fix them. Uh, the biggest problem with the, the fuses on these boards is that for the average pinball technician, they can't replace them. Uh, they're, they're that small. Um, some of the newer boards, they're actually surf, surface mount. Yeah, sure, we'll, some, uh, he's gonna, David's well, gonna on one this out. one, it's this, this is the fuse, this, this red block. Oh, really? Yeah, and it is soldered in. See, that, that is one, that naughty. is that is an old five <laughs> never volt board. Fuse. <clears throat> the five volt boards, uh, most people with good soldering skills can, can change that, that fuse. With the 7.5, they're surface mount and Basically, it takes like a little mini hair dryer to solder them in place, and it's a 100x uh, camera to make sure that you're uh, okay. serious. This board has a fuse. Hmm? It's right there. Oh, good, good, good luck. Okay? So being able to see it, knowing what recognizing it, and then replacing it is, uh, without the right equipment, very problematic. Wow. So yeah, the F100 is the fuse. The tooling, a couple hundred dollars. How much is the board? Just plug it and play. Uh, well, that that's kind of that's kind of hard to say. Each each of the with the the one he has in his hand is a single, and the singles are like twenty five thirty bucks uh, outright. I did, I'm not I, I I can't speak for the factory, but you know I believe that they have an exchange program so that on the singles it may be something like. Fifteen dollars with an exchange. I, I can't I can't speak for them though. But I mean, the larger boards uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, could be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, forty nine fifty dollars exchange. Uh, but they they vary depending on the size and number of LEDs that they have. So the large one, the uh, whatever it is, uh, Tin Man, Tin Man Was One, you know that might be one hundred fifty two hundred bucks something like that. And you know on on an exchange, it may be, uh, you know, 50 bucks exchange. I don't, don't know. Yeah. Well, Jack must send it back to the supplier then if they rework well, it. They no, no, it's he, done, it's it's done in, in the house. factory. It's done in house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they have a repair team that, that goes through the, the defective boards and, and reconditions everything right there in house, uh, which is actually pretty efficient. I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the problems that are, going, that are going wrong with these boards are so minor, it's just, you know, uh, if it wasn't surface mount, anybody could fix it, you know. Um, we, we had a, what we refer to as the $12,000 was. Uh, it was not an LE, it was not a 75th anniversary edition. It was a standard first edition was that somebody loaned to a bar for tournaments, and it had a it has a, it had a casualty. The bar took it upon themselves because they were pinball technicians to repair this was. Well, the when I got the story from the owner, um, I said to him, "It doesn't make any sense. That it doesn't work that way." And then he brought it out to my house, and he told me the story in person, and I said, brother, it don't work that way. I called the factory, and I, I spoke with uh, Frank Becker. He's one of the factory technicians. And Frank goes, oh, that one. And he told me the story, and I said, brother, you're at the factory. You know it doesn't work that way. And he says, yes, I know. That's why we cut them off. I said, well, okay. So if I plug this thing in and it, and it smokes, are you going to cover me? And he said, yeah, we'll cover you. Well, the reason that they cut them off is that after they went through three complete board sets and a monitor, they hadn't found the original problem. And the original problem would have cost them, if they had taken it to David or I, 50 bucks. If they had called the factory, they would have warrantied it. They had a bad trough switch, bad trough opto, and so it was in constant ball search. 
Pinball is pinball is pinball. It is a sealed system. Unless you cut a hole in the bottom of it, then balls don't go nowhere. If it tells you it's missing a ball, you need to look for it. It could be under a plastic, it could be under a sling, it could be, it's in there. Unless somebody reached in and grabbed it and took it out. It's in there. Well, my wife says to me, how many balls does Waz have? I said, well, I don't know, honey, take a look. It's got a sticker that says install ball. I said, I don't know. Well, she looks, she says, there's no sticker. I went, okay, somebody removed the sticker. All right, let me count the trough. One, two, three, four. It's got five balls. She says, no, it doesn't. It's got six. And she just hands me six balls. And I said, well, that's not right. Let me count it again. No, it's got five balls. Oh, okay. So because it's going through ball search and telling, everyone, telling them it's got a missing ball, they threw in another ball. Well, it would start a game, but it wouldn't play right because as soon as that ball moved off, then it's missing a ball again. And it's in ball search while you're playing, which was kind of weird. So after we get everything fixed, and they've gone through three board sets and about three grand, then we get back to the original problem, trough board. David fixed the trough board. It cost 22 cents with shipping? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With shipping, it was like 22 cents to repair the trough board. Problem solved. The trough board didn't recognize it. It wouldn't read that a ball was in a certain position. Is that right. correct? Right. Okay. And that's, that's where we're, that's where we're going to slide into next, is that in addition to having War and Peace for a manual, this has the, probably the best diagnostic software of any pinball machine that I have seen to date. It tells you everything that's wrong with it. All you, but all you have to do Interpreting it can be tricky interpreting. sometimes. So that's, that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and help you interpret it. And the first thing that we're gonna show you is what the diagnostic switch test screen should look like. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure that Butch is back there taking notes. This picture should be part of the manual because this is the correct state of a good working wasp. And if you have that picture of the correct state, anything else can tell you what's wrong with it. The switch diagnostics in WAS is not the standard that everybody's used to of eight by eight for 64. It's 128. It's eight by eight and a second batch of eight by eight. Mike? Doesn't, doesn't use the whole second batch. Yeah. Ah, good. Go ahead and bring this down so I can see it. Okay. We'll just toss it right back in. Oops. It's got a. Actually, I'm going to hold that out for a second so we can see. Oh, yeah. So, what, what David just did is he pulled out the first ball out of the trough. And that is this very first one. It's kind of a puke color, split pea color. And what that's saying is that that switch, it's telling you that that opto is working, but nothing's there. It's open. Or actually, yeah, it's open. It's, yeah, it's, open. It, it, it's got an open pass through so the, break of the beam. The others the are correct. And this open. is so, everything else, everything else that you're seeing up on the screen up there, is the correct state of a good working was. Okay, and I have this picture in my phone because in the, in the manual, <laughs> it doesn't have a picture of the correct state. It cuts it off about halfway over. So anything that you see in here is telling you what's going on. It tells you everything. If you're having a ball trough problem where it's searching for balls, constantly searching for balls, one of these six is going to be wrong. 
Okay. And we've seen these where they've been red. We've seen them where, you know, they're, they're brown. We've seen them where they say they're not used. And it's like, wait a minute, how can that be not used? That's because we had a reference to go with. You know, we took, we took a good working was, took a picture, went and compared it side by side and said, good, 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 bad, oh, problem here. Now, what's causing that problem? And so, you know, by pushing any of these buttons, okay, I'm testing switches and they're changing state. Okay, if they're not changing state, the question is why? Okay, and it gives you a way to go. Well, one of the things that we found in the, in the $12,000 WAS was that this one didn't work, this one, 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 and a couple over here that I can't get my fingers into. All right. Well, they're all on the same path and they're all part of the same daisy chain. Well, even though this is a computer with a pinball display, it still uses the standard pinball switch matrix. But half of it is optos, half of it is physical switches. That's all. And so what, what we had was when they were screwing with the, the machine, they lifted it up, put it down, lift up, put it down, and weren't paying attention to the wires on the side. They broke a wire in the daisy chain. And what we found was that, you know, it took us a while to find it, but this whole side just didn't work. Well, the daisy chain was broken. When I found the daisy chain was broken, I, I didn't even solder it back in place. I just stripped both, connected it, and checked everything around it. And everything around it worked like a champ. That tells me, oh, solder it back in place. These yo-yos pulled out the wire. Pulled out the wire? Yeah. Because they weren't paying attention to when they lifted the play field and set the play field down, it, it was a rub spot, you know? And I modified the switch a little bit so that it wouldn't do that again, you know? And the modification was, here, let me bend this in a little bit, just so it clears just a hair better. You know? So this was like basically a hanger flock from the factory then, or a design flock? <sighs> you really can't say that. It, it's, it, you know, theoretically, the, the switch should fit there. You know, it, theoretically, it should clear. You know, but but if you're sloppy, you drop the play field a little crooked, you're going to hit. You know, it's a complex play field. There's a lot going on under there. You got to be careful. It's a pinball machine. You got to be careful. Period. You're, you're, you're talking. There's a, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot stuffed in a little space. Know. You know, so I mean, this this could have even shifted a little bit when they were zip tying and cleaning up everything. Like it could have happened. You know, it's. It, I don't see it as a factory flaw. I see it as oh, this is a, a minor problem. Fix it, move on. You know, not, it's not even worth bitching about, in my mind. But uh, like I say, I, I think that everything, that this, this is just about the only screen that you need. Okay, and you can change states in this screen. Because if you go back a screen and go back to tests, you can run the witch up and you will see that the witch will, right now she's up. If you go to the other test, run the witch down, okay, this will turn this ugly color and then it'll go, the, that'll go green. Well, you toggle back and forth, you got everything you need. So you're, exactly, you're, you're toggling everything. And it's either going to be green or blue. And if it's this, you know, this ugly color are usually your optos because you have the two states of the optos. It's either there or it's not. You know, it's either, uh, you know, you have something in the window, i.e. a ball, or a screwdriver, or your finger, or something there, or you have nothing. Anything like that? Um, as you said, you can, if you've got optos, you can test it with pretty much anything. A popsicle stick, if you're worried about shorting things out. You know, 
uh, tongue depressor, gives you a nice, you know, clean. You want something that's gonna break the beam. Um, certain plastics won't work because the IR will go right through them. So a piece of wood, a, a chopstick, a tooth, you know, um, pretty much anything like that will go through there. Um, and it, it's a good way to test. You put it in, it should report, dig it out, it should turn off. If that doesn't happen, you've got bad problem. You got a problem there. But other other than lighting issues, almost anything that goes wrong with other than lighting or monitor issues, excuse me. Anything that goes wrong with this game can be diagnosed from the switch matrix. And you know, there are a couple of other tests in there as well that well, you know that solenoid tests, tests and, and, yeah. and things like that. But that switch matrix will lead you to, if you need to go into a deeper test, I need to test the lower left flipper. I need to test the lower right flipper, the upper left flipper. You can do that. It'll tell you, oh, hey, I need to go there. And you go into those tests and go, okay, now I need to go there. Oh, yep, works okay. Oh, no, there's the problem. Like I say, this is some of the best diagnostic pinball software that I have seen. And I've seen everything for 40 years. Between the two of us, we, we have over 60 years of experience collecting, repairing, and restoring arcade video games and pinball machines. You know, uh, who, ha who has more than 10 games? Okay. Who has more than 50 games? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. Who has a problem? <laughs> I mean, uh, excuse me, who has over 300 games? <clears throat> Hi, my name is David. I have a problem. I could own, form a collector's group for Gorilla Rack. <laughs> See, da David's, David's version of, of, of collecting Wizard of Oz, if, if he was a Wizard of Oz collector, would be he would need the standard edition the Emerald City Edition, the, uh, what is it, Ruby Red Slipper 75th Anniversary Edition, and I <clears> think <throat> there might be, uh, yeah, in the, in the limited edition. Uh, and if he was a Hobbit collector, he would need Hobbit, uh, Smog version, Smog, Smog version, uh, Black Smog, uh, yeah. Because we can't own just one. We have to have every variant even if the art's the same. Here we thought we were at So, you know, yes, we have over 400 games here, and, well, three quarters could have been his. They're not. They could have been. I mean, one year between the two of us, we sent uh, 106 games to the show. And after we did that, we looked at each other and said, Oh, God, no. <laughs> Never again. Never going to happen again. So, uh, does anybody have any questions for us? Where do you get the picture of how it's supposed to be, the colors? Well, right now, you can currently get the picture out of the manual. Okay? And it's, it's a little bit off. But as, as I said, hopefully... Butch Peel is going to put that in the next manual revision of what a correct working switch status is. Um, you can also probably come on up here, take a look at this one, and snap a picture. I wouldn't take it off this screen because we're running a, uh, a DVI into a VGA. It's running split, which uh, is why this is cropped. When yeah, we'd, we'd run it off size. one of the larger screens. And uh, you can take a picture with a camera, and uh, I would mark that picture as working reference picture. For was. Yeah. You said you're going to have any problems with that one too. There's so many variants, that's why you can't say that's the one. If somebody doesn't have their locks in when the ball ends, one of those will be up in your castle place, but one of them will be yeah. locked over here. You'll have two or three brown instead of all three to the trough. And oh my God, what's wrong with my game? There's a lot of variants. Well, but you can, also, you can also say that if you have all five balls in the trough and your witch is up, your witch is down, your blah, blah, blah is open, closed, whatever, 
this is what you should see. And that could be part of the manual reference and say that, you know, this is for reference. You need to meet these conditions in order to have this picture. And this gives you a starting point. So that would, that would work, you know, and, and it's, it, it, which is correct. You know, I mean, if you've if, got this on the internet pinball database, you could always go there. And this, no, uh, what we put on the internet, uh, pinball database was the, uh, flow chart for, uh, repairing the monitor. Oh. If you're, if you're having monitor issues. Um, Would you put this on the um, If there were more than 24 hours in a day, yes, I would. Um, yeah, it's, I'll take a case of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been running quite a few 30-hour days, and uh, yeah, so we uh, between the two of us, you know. Uh, David owns Let's Play Cafe out in Monroe, which is a, an arcade and game store, in addition to having a real job. And then I tax him pretty heavy with uh, fixing some of my crap because I don't have time to fix my own stuff because I'm, I'm retired. Being retired means I have plenty of time to fix other people's crap. I have no time to fix my stuff, but I have plenty of time to fix other people's crap. What you got, Lou? It doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't yeah I, I don't have a picture. There's, a monitor is effectively a sealed unit. If it fails, you're going to talk to the factory about getting a replacement. Well, you don't. I, you don't I wouldn't always try have to get re in and repair one of these. It's just not. You don't always have to get get the replacement because a lot of the times uh, they had a a brand that they bought for a while, and and we covered that in the in the flow chart, which which ones, which specific models it was. Uh, but they were coming from uh, the supplier with defective parts in them. And so, you know, they, they put out this beautiful picture, and then all of a sudden you get nothing. You know, and, and, the, and it's two little boards in the back. You know, and so they, so they sent the factory a whole bunch of these little boards and go, oh, well, then that goes out, just send these out to your people. And the factory went, well, okay, if, if you're not going to take care of us, and, you, and that's close, and that'll get us going, they, they're, they're Cool. Another curiosity question I like to ask the chair. If you have a supplier that sends you something that's short, you're shortchanged on quality, what, what is your recourse? Not to, I didn't mean to interrupt here. No, no, no. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. It's all good. It's all good. Like I, like I say, I, Jack's, Jack's willing to, like I say, so, he's here to support us. So, here's what we do. I need a mic. I need a mic. I didn't tell you I was going to throw you under the bus. Hi. I got the tire marks on my back. I'm here all week. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Dave and Dave. Not that I'm taking over your show, but a uh, little, little hot mic over here, a little down there. My, my. So, um, first and foremost, I really enjoyed this. I haven't been at a service seminar for my own game. So this kind of gave me a feeling uh, when I was first learning about Valley games and they had a guy named Bernie Powers go out across the country and teach everybody how, like, eight ball worked. Nobody knew what that was. So this was kind of cool. And so a good primer. There's a lot more information, though. Really, we designed these games so they work. We didn't design them to break. My saying is, right, if it ain't pinball, it ain't broke. However, Jersey Jack games, we want them to work all the time. We're still supporting games out of warranty. The light, light board issues, it was a problem unrelated to us. It was a problem with a part, and you just couldn't do it. So your question was, what do we do with a vendor that sends us bad parts? You know, I come from Brooklyn, so... Uh, you just imagine what happens to that vendor, you know? <laughs> Are we live? You know, it's a difficult thing. Not everybody does stuff on purpose. Things happen by accident. And you have to work through it. You know, you work with your vendor. And certainly, we want to support everybody. We have a really good distributor in this area, in Charlie Martin at the Seattle Pinball Museum. 
So anybody that has anything that doesn't work, like this poor game that sat around for, I'll tell you what, this is actually it a was, rare game. Uh, this game sat around for three years. This is probably the rarest of all the Wizard of Oz games, really. This is a direct print cabinet on a standard game. So there are probably like uh, less than 100 of those made. Nobody knows that, but now you know it. Uh, that's a pretty rare game. So it really pays to get it working. So anybody that has any issues here, see Charlie. Charlie, put your hand up. Anybody that has any real bigger issues, 1-800-473-JACK. That rings here. And I pretty much answer it like an idiot every, hang on a minute. <laughs> Jen wants you to send more pictures. So I answer that all the time. And uh, Frank Becker ran Atari service back in 1995, 1975. We got a lot of really great people in customer service. And we want to just make sure everything works. And I truly appreciate you guys, Dave and Dave. I know I had a, about a six hour conversation with yep. you one day about this and I do appreciate it and Dave I appreciate it you know you got to get out and teach people the poor operator that got in there and messed everything up it's just he didn't have the right information you know how many games did we fix that had a bolt in the place of a screw or somebody took a gum wrapper and wrapped it around <laughs> a fuse and they waited for something to burn I mean we all have a million stories about how not to fix pinball machines right so we're trying to make them better and better and the game has a lot of technology in it, so it's got more of a chance for more stuff to break. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions? We won't, we won't throw Jack under the bus anymore, and you know, Jack will be wandering around later, and uh, you know, he, <laughs> He is he is pitching dialed in, and uh, so uh, you know yeah it was, it was good for a while and uh, you know the the next uh, next name on the list is dialed in so uh, you know we we do have two dialed ins and uh, of course uh, you might have a wait for them because uh, they seem to be pretty popular. Um, that's that's kind of where we're at and hopefully we've we've uh, given you a little bit of information to get you on the way to, to trying to make this better. Um, you know, both David and I are, are available on most of the forums. Uh, and, you know, we're uh, usually willing to, to help out people that are stuck uh, without charging them, usually. If you are stuck sufficiently that you feel you just don't want to be over your head, we also will charge and we fix. Um, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know, I just not, I don't feel qualified. I've been fixing games for 30 years. I don't do car repairs. Either he shows me what I'm doing wrong or I take it and somebody pay. You know, I know where my limits are and what I, skill sets I don't want to take. Or the equipment I don't want to buy. Um, we've invested into that stuff. We're, we feel that we're, we're qualified to do that. Um, if you want to tackle it yourself, more power, you know, enjoy and learn. And, and because of the $12,000 was, uh, David invested heavily into uh, the majority of the chips on every one of these boards so that should a problem arise, we can fix them. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, Dave, when I <clears throat> talked to you on the phone here a while back, you said you did not have any, any repair parties during the past year. Is this something you're going to pick up again and do? Well, there, there were several, several repair parties uh, throughout the year. I personally did not have any, and I was unable to, uh, I think I attended one this year, uh, which is a, a rarity for me. Usually I attend almost every repair party. Uh, it's just that uh, life kind of got in the way this year. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, Patty's had some health issues this year uh, that, uh, you know, that kind of sidelined us. Uh, we were going to go to... Pentagogo and that kind of went sideways and the, you know. the, the biggest trick in the modern generations is surface mount components. It, it takes some special skills, some special tools to do these and not end up with just a hashed mess. And that, that's where you're going to run into problems. Um, oh. And everybody kind of giggles when I, when I say it, that, that he uses a 100X camera 
to, to do that with? Well, yes, it's a 100X camera on a monitor, and he's actually looking at the monitor while yeah. soldering that stuff. Uh, it, it, it's effectively it's electronic surgery. Um, oh, I can't read those damn chips. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, there it is. And when it's this big, I can see it on the screen. Uh, yeah. Or I get my children to do it for me. You're, you're probably pretty good, steady hands. You know, just teach them up. So, in in you know, if if there's no further questions, in closing, what I what I want to want everybody to leave here with is if you have a problem. You heard it here first from the man. <clears throat> give us a call. I should say, give them a call. Don't make it worse. Okay. Give yeah. them a call. They stand behind what they sell. Give them a call. You know? Does it work now? Yes, it does. 100%. Uh, no. No. Uh, no. We, <clears throat> the, only reason, the only reason it doesn't work 100% is because uh, we did not. We didn't get the parts, and the, uh, we didn't tell the factory what to send us. The owner of the game received the parts of what he told them was wrong with it. So everything that they sent uh, that was bad, we and David and, and uh, Butch installed, and uh, everything, everything's, that's all good, you know. But yeah. it, this, yeah, will, this will be back in circulation probably inside the next month or two. So one unique feature so. of this machine. <clears throat> we didn't get a replacement for the mini play field light display board. This game, you can go in and tell it, oh, I'm missing this board. Don't try to use it. And the game will adapt and run. Yes, that's blank, but it's not freaking out because it's blank. So Which there's, is there's a disable feature for Yes, there is. If you if you you wanna go ahead and punch it up? If you if you disable if you disable that particular board, what it does is it corrects the timing for the rest of the light board. Because it it just eliminates it. Well if you were just to unplug it and eliminate it, well then all your timing's off on your the rest of your light boards. Uh, if you weird. tell it it's disabled, then it just doesn't it doesn't it think it's there anymore and it compensates and so all of the rest of the lighting is correct. Where does that live? Okay. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. So you look at this. These are off. You know, it's 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 turned off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it is a long day day chain, it's basically pushing settings for this light through this light through this light through this light. If it doesn't know that this one's missing. When it's done pushing, everything's going to be shifted by a little bit because you've jumpered past one. So being able to configure it and say, nope, this one's not here, it knows don't push data for that flight because it's not there, and the stack adapts. It's not a timing per se. Yeah. It's an address. Yeah. So each, so there's a string of uh, flight four, there's a string of individual lights. In, each one has its own address based on where it is in that string. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. If you jump over the third and fourth one, you go from second all the way to fifth. Now your address is dropped by two for everything yeah. else. But what it's telling you it is it's compensating that. Yeah. So that, that's what it is, it's an addressing thing. Like, you know, one, one board at a time has, might have 15 addresses on it. One might have one address on it. So you have to turn off each one. Yeah, yes, in the, in the well, engineering... Well, like I said, War and Peace is tough to cover. Well, you can't you know. watch Seinfeld while you're doing it. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 in, and in Butch's engineering geek world, it's accuracy. In my mechanical world, it's timing. Same thing. We're going the exact same place. Anyway, uh, and again, uh, also in closing, um, let's, uh, let's reiterate what, uh, what Jack threw out there is uh, we're going to throw Charlie under the bus. So Seattle Pinball Museum is your local guy to call. And uh, hook him up. Charlie would love to hear from you. If you got a problem, Waz, Hobbit, dialed in. Oh, that's not out yet. Uh, call Charlie. How many of these really have problems? I mean, for the 
record, Jack? Mine's worked perfectly every since I got out of the box oh, in October. <laughs> Not every single one, but I would be able to show. I've heard from people that have the game from day one, never had a problem, and they left. They say, ha, I never had a problem. They have people that they have problems, and they're absolutely correct. There's like one out of 100 or two out of 100. Well, here, let me, let, me, let me jump on that, Dennis. Chris Walsh, the, the leader of our show, okay, has had his from day one, and he said, like Jack said, I've never had a problem with mine. Ha! And I fixed two light boards for him. You know what he said? Because he said, because he said. He jumps out the fuses. That's right. That's what he told me he does. Well, that's because I didn't have a fuse, and I said, dude, you got a blown fuse. And he, he says, oh, we can just jump that. And I said, yeah, sure, he go says, ahead. I don't care. I just jumped out the fuse. Hmm? I said, well, you like to live dangerously. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's as, long as, as soon as you come right out and say, I've had it since day one. I've never had a problem with it. Better knock on wood. Yeah. You, you've, just, you've just screwed yourself. I usually take that guy to play the lottery with you. Yeah. So, Yeah. Uh, the crimpers that, that uh, we use are the, uh, oh, God, I forgot the name of them. Uh, hmm. Platinum 16801C. 16801C. $25? They're, they're, they're about 20 bucks, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, we can usually find them on Amazon. Can we get those? Uh, there used to be a place that, that sold them for... A little less, like 20, 25 bucks, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we had some wires. One six eight zero one C. Those end up out here. Okay. Thank you, oh, did we get our cables back? Yes, I was just looking for it. I was like, wait. All right, who snaked our cable? Butch, give our cables back. In a I know you pins. took that cable I made. <laughs> 